Let me ask the panel two questions. The first question is, what does it mean when we say that our worship leadership is skillful and trained? Um, um, I, uh, as we talk about this whole dynamic of worship in the local church, what does it mean when we say that, um, Sister Teresa, Sister Judith, what does it mean when we say, Steve, that someone is skillful and trained? What does that mean? Because I think that a part of what we're struggling with is that we define skillful and trained in a way that may actually inhibit healthy worship. So what does it mean when we say skillful and trained? Everyone can jump in. Anyone? Good evening, everybody. Um, I, 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 I realize more, more than anything else that we're living in a time where people are operating in the house of the Lord and they've never been given an opportunity to know the voice of God. So it's very hard for you to operate skillfully when you don't understand the voice of your supervisor. One of the things that I realized as I look back to 1 Samuel in the first chapter where we see um, Hannah asking God in the temple to please give me a man child lest I die. And if you give me a child, I will give the child to serve you all the days of his life. So here you have a woman who has not even gotten pregnant yet, but she's spoken to the destiny of that child. And the destiny of that child is that you will serve in the house of the Lord all the days of your life. So she goes home, she gets pregnant by her husband, and now she has the child. Elkanah is going yonder to worship again and says, shall you take you and the child, you going with me to worship? He said, no. She said, no, for the child had not been weaned. In other words, you have a call, but you're too immature to be in the place of the call. After the child is now matured, watch this, a year later, they take the child to the place of service to sit and observe because you have a call, but you don't know the voice. As he progresses, he has an encounter in his sleep, he hears his name. And because he's not familiar with the voice, he goes to Eli the priest and say, did you call me? Y'all know the story. After the third time, what happens? Eli perceives that this is God speaking. And he said, this time when you hear, say, speak, Lord, thy servant, hear him. So now you are finally at a place where you recognize the voice. We have people in operation who don't know the voice because you were placed based on the magnitude of your gifting and your talent minus the revelation for the reason for which you were giving the gifting and the talent. Music is not your ministry. The saints have one ministry, and that's to reconcile the world back to Jesus. Your gift is the tool that God gave you to do the ministry. So now skill minus revelation equals devastation. So our challenge is, how many of our leaders are willing to shut down the systems to just train everyone as to how God is to be approached? We need to dismiss the fact that we think that Levi's are just singers and musicians. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we are all called a royal priesthood. A people that's been extracted from the world system to teach the world who he is. So that's where our challenge is. So we, we have to, okay, here we go. How bad do we want it? I so agree and I just walked in here because I was back there answering questions, but let me say this to us. We don't need a, this is not a, 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 we can't just throw up some fresh paint and throw up new carpet. We don't need a remodel. We need to rip up everything and lay the foundations again because if the foundation is bad, the walls will eventually crack and the roof is going to cave in. You have to lay your foundations again and many of us have no foundation because your gift placed you somewhere before you could ever get it.
Brother Steve Lawrence just shared is so profound, um, the skill, the training. But I want to also say that Dr. Newman said something that was so important. And he said that we have to be holistic. Basically, he said that we have to be educated yes. mm -hmm. in all aspects and holistic in our education. So the skill and the training that we talk about, because you're worship leaders, because you're praise dancers, because you're psalmists, and because you're musicians in churches, don't limit yourself to the, the training of music right. or even the training biblically. But you need to socially, you need to understand the history of the church. You need to understand the history of music. I, I, I you know, not to be braggadocious, but I have a master's degree in music. I, there are certain kinds of chords and keys that you play in that have certain, elicit certain emotions. There's certain instruments that you play, that you orchestrate things with that elicit certain emotions and certain things you should not, certain things you should not do, tritones and all that kind of thing. And the stuff that we do, it has to transcend just the worship experience. It has to be something that ministers to the whole person. So you have to study outside of music and outside of just the church experience and know how, to, how you can impact the world, the community, the people that you're trying to draw in, how you're going to use your gifts and your skills to impact more people than just the people that are sitting in front of you. Am I being clear with that? Amen. That's all I wanted to say.